Welcome to the Momnesia Podcast, a podcast for moms where we share the stories we want to remember and the ones we wish we could forget. We're your hosts, Julie Short and Sarah McLaughlin. Julie and I are excited to invite you to some of the events that we're hosting and the work that we're doing this year. Did you know that I have six albums on Spotify, on Apple Music, and pretty much all of the places that you can listen? Yes, I do. I've been churning out tunes for years, y'all. And that means you can go right now. You're probably already paying for those services, so you can listen for free. It basically tells all the bots that Sarah should keep making music. Thanks for checking those out. I'm also doing tons of collaborations this year with other musicians and artists worldwide, putting out remote covers and original tunes. Check those out on Instagram at Sarah Tunes and on Facebook at Sarah Scarborough Music. You can always check out where I'll be performing live at saratunes.com. Some of the work that Julie is doing, are you tired of these questions keeping you up at night? What am I doing with my life? Surely there's more to life than this, right? The truth is... When you try to face obstacles on your own, it's hard to see past the struggle. But with Awake Enneagram Coaching, you don't have to go it alone. You can expose the blind spots that have been holding you back. You can find clarity on your strengths, your purpose, and your goals. And you can overcome your struggles, disappointments, and everything that's been holding you back. So if you're ready to wake up to the power hiding deep within your true self, then let's not waste another minute. Go to juliekshort.com and book a free 15-minute clarity call and discover how to get started. Here's something new that we're offering in Season 3. Are you interested in advertising on Momnesia? Reach out to us via email to find out how you can connect with our listeners. For this episode of Momnesia, we're doing something a little bit different for our catch-up. It's so cool when we have like this great camaraderie with our guests, and sometimes we record our catch-up before, and sometimes we record it after we meet with our guests. And in this particular case, we recorded our interview and just launched right in and had so many things to talk about and had such great chemistry with this pair that we didn't feel like we needed an additional catch-up. We hope you love this conversation. We were so enriched by it. This is Uzma Joffrey and Zawiya Hassan, and they are the hosts of the podcast, Mommy and Well Muslim. telling us she just went to Vegas for the first time. Oh, how was it? It was cool. I liked it. I mean, we were, we flew into Vegas so that we could drive to Yosemite. Oh, so we were yeah. only there in Vegas one evening and then on the night before the flight home one evening. It was very quiet, we realized, because of everything. And I was telling Julie, like, that's about our pace. Like, that was packed for what I <laughs> would like. But the drive to Yosemite was beautiful. Oh, like Death Valley and all of that was just yeah. astounding. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So glad you got to do that. You travel a lot because aren't you coming to Phoenix too in December? Yeah. I don't always travel a lot, especially these days, but yeah, it's, it's off and on. I'm traveling for fun again, not for work. I used oh, to travel okay. a lot for work. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, lucky, lucky. And so here's Zeba. Hello, lady Hello. girl. Hi, Zeba. Sorry about that. I was in the Google Hangouts and I'm like, oh, I can't okay. find a Zoom link to save my life. So <laughs> oh, I apologize okay. for that, Julie and Sarah. Thank you guys so nice much to for meeting you. Me. Nice to no meet problem. you. No problem. I don't have about anything. Being late. I, I feel bad. All eyeliner. you ladies look pre- pretty. I don't have anything. Oh, no. Gonna no. This is not going to be video, right? Like, no. Audio. no. Okay. There That's her face about filter. I was like, that means I'm going to have to like do something. I am totally chanting. 1994 Julie. I have on a flannel. I love it. And Doc Martens. She's got oh, the yeah. 
<laughs> I just got some Doc Martens. I love That's it. Exciting. That's my daughter. My daughter now is walking around like she wears Nirvana t-shirts, oh, yeah. Nirvana, leggings, Doc oh, she's Martens. Living the best life. Oh, and I'm like, you know, I couldn't afford Doc Martens. I had to sign Doc Martens. Exactly. I did it. Yeah. And so I'm like, you best believe I'm gonna make sure, but she looks so cute. I do yeah. love it. <laughs> The yeah. same. I see. Now that I'm 42, I can afford them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I want the red ones. I always wanted the maroon, the burgundy Ooh, ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, those are hot. Those Killer. Are. Yeah, I see that with like the scrunchies, the chokers, yes. the burks. It's like I, I'm wearing my daughter's scrunchie right now uh, because yep, I did not wash my hair. Hello. Nice. <laughs> Love A good it. messy bun. Sometimes we had those things growing up, but it was like. I don't know if you guys had this. It was a really famous like gap sweater and it had the big V. It had like three the varsity sp- sweater. Oh, yeah. 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 We all had that. Well, I didn't have I, that. I always had that like once Mine was a knockoff. <laughs> yeah. Once it was on clearance, like six <laughs> months later when later. people weren't wearing sweaters wearing the, and weren't cool I anymore. Know. Isn't that sad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shoot, missed it again. Yeah. I always try, I, I'm so for it. Now. I tell my kids right now, I'm like, I would if I were to die and come back, I would want to come back as my children. Okay. Because <laughs> the they are living their best life. And well, I my boys don't care, but my daughter, because she is my only girl, I do spoil her. I'm uh-huh. not gonna lie. I'm like, you want that shirt? Because the boys wear sweat clothes all the they time. They don't care oh, yeah. at mm-hmm. all. Also, the fact that she does. I enjoy taking her shopping. Mm -hmm. We just had this conversation because my 10 year old son is (laughs) growing like a weed. He he said something that made me want to slap him and I'm glad I did it. He he was trying to communicate to me what kind of costume he wanted for Halloween. And he's looking on Pinterest and it's just not going to be right. And so he said, it's like, I have nothing to look forward to on Halloween. And I was like, the free candy is not enough. The outside, I will not tolerate this. Get up there. <laughs> Be grateful. Like you're Darn living, it. yeah, you are living your best life, bro. Exactly. <laughs> so we're not doing trick or treating this year, I have to say. So yeah. I'm just, we're, I mean, because it's definitely, I mean, we're going into this, the second wave. And so what I'm do, we're all doing is we're, we're going to have an outdoor movie in our front lawn. Oh, I invite oh, that's my cool. neighbors. I'm like, listen, I'll have candy at the edge of the driveway. Help yourself. We're going to be watching Hotel Transylvania. Oh, I love um, it. So we're just going to, we're going to do that. They still get to be dressed up, but it's going to be cold and rainy. So let's see even how yeah. long that lasts. But mm-hmm. it it's just doesn't make sense to me to go house to house mm-hmm. um, yeah. during this period. <laughs> right, I'm right. Like, oh, we're I'm not, not a trick or treating sure. family anyway. We yeah, don't do it. We buy the costumes uh-huh. and then we wear the costumes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why not? Park, soccer yeah. games. Yeah. I'm, nice. I want every dollar's worth out of there. Oh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Ours is kind of like that. It's, <laughs> the neighbors are having a bonfire, so it's the yeah. kids on our street. We're, we're exactly. trying to Fun. modify it, but I kind of felt torn because people are opening their doors, but I'm like, it's masked and outside. How many more dangerous things are we doing? Yes. I just felt kind of a tension about what to do. Yes. No, it, I mean, honestly, right now, there's no good answer. Let's yeah, just be right. real. We're, we're yeah. parenting during a pandemic. Um, we have to be mindful of that. And each family has to do whatever they need to do to get through what they need to get through. Yeah, I mean, real. And, and nobody should be judging or like I tell, say all the time, COVID shaming. Right. So do what you need to do for your family. And if that means going trick-or-treating, do it. For us, I'm going to put the candy at the end of the driveway. Yeah. I really don't want it in my house. <laughs> yeah. And I'm doing my movie in the front yard. So whoever wants to come and watch it can come pull up a blanket and watch it. So I love that. Yeah. Where are gonna, you located again? Are you in Texas? No, I'm in D.C., the D.C. metro oh, DC, area. That's yeah. right, opposite coast. Okay. Yeah, so she's on a totally different... The next 48 hours are going to be super confusing yes, for me. I would actually say the next time... 48 hours plus three months. So you're confusing. now going to be two hours behind me versus yes. three hours. So when we're doing our... Even today, I was like, is it central? Is it Eastern? <laughs> right. Could you remind me? Or she starts me? texting me three hours before it's time <laughs> right. for me to get exactly, off. Exactly, so. because I wake up at five and she's like, stop texting me in the crack of dawn. <laughs> so which one of you changes times? She I does. Do. I don't. I'm Phoenix. Arizona doesn't Arizona change. change. We don't have daylight savings. Yeah, we used to be like that and I loved it. I do yeah. not like that we change now. Uh-huh. Yeah. I had moved from either. We're in Indiana, and I had moved from Arizona to Indiana, and they were the two places that didn't change. 
and then An- Indiana. Oh, Indiana doesn't is- change either. You guys are where? Indianapolis? Also. We do change now. You do they change, change now. now. There's only two a, states like that don't. a few don't, years ago. I, I think it's us and who else? Is it Oregon? I don't remember. There's two, because that was on yeah. our trivia question last night. Oh. oh, it We was. do couples trivia every week. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's if fine. If I can stay awake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she can't stay awake for it because it's <laughs> 8 thir- 6.30 Central time. It's uh-huh. 9.30 no, Eastern. 8.30 Central. 8.30 Central. So she falls asleep already because she wakes up at 4. Yeah. Um, but like as couples, we found it really helpful during the pandemic to find something to get together and do. And I the love that. Has been it. Yeah. So what, do you use a guide or Trivial Pursuit or what? There's actually a podcast um, that it's based off of, um, but the coordinators are in Milwaukee okay. and um, they started it based on that podcast and then they were recruiting for couples. And so we signed up a bunch of couples and, and did it. So it's six rounds with a midpoint round for extra points and then a gauntlet where you have to get all three questions right in nice. order to win. And there's like wagers and everything. That's cool. So there's no money exchange. It's just good fun so that we don't kill the people that we live with. Right. Oh my God, girl. Yeah. But there, there is a place here in Indy that does that too. We've done a few nights with our friends, Ethan and Kirsten. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, that's cool. That is fun. It is a yeah. way to kind of stay connected. And yeah. we do a lot of Jackbox games. Have you guys ever done Jackbox? No. I don't, I, I'm assuming somebody has to buy it and we don't oh. have it, but our friends do, but they are games that you can play like through through the internet virtually Ooh. virtually i heard you, you know. could do that with the cards against humanity i would oh. love to set something up like that you know you i've never that. played that i don't know why i haven't oh played God. it either god it's yeah. so oh. fun don't play it with teenagers yeah. yeah it makes for some really awkward conversations so do not do that but it is so fun we should do that like i'm gonna start playing that it right up. now I'm, I, actually we should do a podcasters cards against the humanities oh, oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. wouldn't that be so fun <laughs> We, we would have to check box though, not for kids. And exactly, not explicit. for kids. Yeah. And then yeah, those are the best ones. Explicit. <laughs> See, for for Muslims, it's so nice to be able to have a trivia because usually the trivia bowls are like in bars and stuff, and so yes. you have to drink, mm-hmm. right? It's like the waiters don't like you when you keep ordering cokes, right? Coffee. Right. So. Yeah, this, this works out really well for us. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad that we've been recording this because this has been great banter and we probably will use some of it. But oh, typically we start <laughs> we start with introducing you guys. So and we just start a co- our conversation. I am so I know. I like I know you ladies. So I, I know. know. It's like ready to go. <laughs> when you listen to people's podcasts, you feel like you get you to know them. You do feel so like you know them. That's I so do fun. feel like I know you ladies a little bit, but I'm so excited to get to know you more. We have Uzma Joffrey and Zabia Hassan, mm-hmm. and these are the the moms at Mommying While Muslim. So Ooh. ladies, Ooh. would you take some time to introduce yourself? Give us your mom stats. I'm Uzma <laughs> Joffrey. I'm a mom of four. So boy 12, boy 11, girl nine, boy five. Uh, and... Uh, I love my last one because he's got really long hair. And since we were talking about costumes anywhere, he's the one who wore the Deadpool to the grocery store one time. <laughs> oh my goodness. And actually last winter, a year ago, because I was shopping for Thanksgiving, I remember. Oh. And he decided, okay, I'm done with the mask in my face. And in the freezer section, tried to pull the zipper down. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh. His long hair got caught. Because of course the Deadpool is like behind your head. Mm-hmm. Um, and his long hair got caught in it. And a gentleman saw me struggling with my child. Oh, no. And then put my son's face on his head hip and started taking the 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 hair out of the zipper it was a very oh my gosh sure but so fine I was like yeah a grown man has my son's hair head on his hip and I'm not freaking out (laughs) (laughs) it was funny so I guess professionally I'm a physician and uh, I have a private practice where I specialize in geriatric medicine and see my oldest old people with the black bag okay nice and where are you located I'm in Phoenix Arizona in Phoenix. Okay. Julie. What about you, Zavia? I know. I love that. I was yes, going to try not to go would. on and on and on, but I love Phoenix. I love Her Arizona. Hometown. Yeah. I know. Oh, that's I miss so it fun. so much. Um, so I'm Zeba Hassan. I'm originally from Chicago, mama of four. My oldest is 17, actually. Um, Zachary, he's a boy. I have a Zara who is going to be 15, uh, almost 10 year old Zaid, and three boys and a girl. My last is seven. Zan, we're all Z's. Yes. Um, so we're known as the Z crew here in um, the McLean, Virginia area. Uh, I, and it's funny because my husband is actually from Terre Haute. 
Indiana. No way. Yeah. So his dad taught at ISU. So that's the Indiana. And so we're pretty well versed with Indy, Fishers, all that. We actually just sold our company there called Mansfield King. So that's based out of Indianapolis. So we have a a good connection with the Midwest still and IU and all that fun stuff. But um, what do I do for a living now? I am a student. Uh, I went back to school. I was an event planner before COVID and decided I hated it. I hated it. I was starting to hate it anyway. Um, okay. so like That's event good. marketing. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't because of any other, I mean, I was just like, this is just, why are we doing this? This is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now I'm getting my master's in divinity and parent coaching. So my whole point will be kind of putting the two things together cool. and parenting from a spiritual um, perspective, obviously with Islam as my lens, but I am learning about the other religions as well. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, amongst homeschooling my younger two, which has been quite a fun journey. <laughs> well, before we, wow. uh, cause I do have questions about that. I do mm-hmm. want to hit on the divinity. I went to seminary as well. Ooh. I went to Fuller Seminary and um, I'd love to hear, where are you going to school? So I'm actually going to the University of Sufism because I'm learning from an Islamic Sufi perspective. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm doing my certification. Actually, I hate admitting it and saying it out loud through Harvard University to do all the interfaith. But no, yeah. I don't like saying that. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous because I hate it. Um, so the Masters of Divinity is coming from the University of Sufism because I am focusing on the Sufi um, lens of mm-hmm. Islam. And then the uh, interfaith scripture is coming from Harvard University, where I'm studying. Right now, I'm studying Buddhism, which is super fun. And you'd be surprised by how much we all have in common, because that's yeah, really yeah. where my parenting philosophy comes from, being biracial and multi-religious in my own family. Wow. That sounds awesome. fascinating. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about that all yes. day long, girl. Yeah, yeah might as well. Because I'm at the stage where I'm like, why not now? What the heck? I'm so proud of you. Why not? Why it's not? Funny, she first... went from should we, can we, will we, to why not? We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Doing it. Get it done. <laughs> Our first guest of this season three was also a Harvard grad. That's so funny. I, I was listening to this thing about it's like, weird. Oh, it's like hashtag hard right? Yeah, but yeah. it's just, it's weird. Cause it's, okay. So where I live, um, a lot of these people are like crazy. I mean, just imagine, right. Uh-huh. Um, so put it, the senators and all these stupid people live here. Right. <laughs> and so the, you na- the people name drop on the playground mm-hmm. and I'm oh, kind dear. of like, so I'm just not into that. Cause I'm just uh-huh. like, okay, so what are you doing with your life? Okay. So mm-hmm. I, or when they say I went to school in Boston, right. But not Boston actually college. It, Right. You know, like that's Actually, literally what Cambridge. people say. And I'm like, yeah. give me a break. So yeah, it's yeah. embarrassing. So I'm doing it because I love, I just want to learn about it. And, you know, in parenting the next generation, why not expand yeah. our, our knowledge base? And she's minimizing her goals. Like her goal is to like up-level the podcast. That's why she's doing it too. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Well, we are glad that you are doing that yeah. on behalf of Thank the podcast you. and yourself Thank and you. your family and your community. Those are yes. all, all of us. fabulous yeah. things. So we're going to have so much... Not that we don't already have stuff to learn from you, but <laughs> or look, talk about we learn from each other. That's the yes, beauty. exactly. So go back one second. What is your youngest child's name again? Zan. That's my sister's name. Are you serious? Yeah. No, it's actually Suzanne, but she's gone by Zan her whole Zan. life. That's so funny. Yeah. So it's I love that. I, but I've never talked to another Zan. That's so funny. <laughs> He's my Zan. So um, you or- have boys, right? Because Legos Zan is like one of the four. Yeah. Lego ninjas. Ninja. Yeah. Oh, I have four girls and a boy. So we're not a big my one of my girls is the only Lego person, but we're not oh. like deep into it. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, cool. so both of you homeschool and Uzma, you said you're doing the unschooling. And I like I had to stop myself from asking all my questions prior yes. to recording this. Because <laughs> I want to hear about it here. So okay. tell us a little bit about how you guys are navigating education. And I realized that, you know, for some of us, like right now, I'm doing virtual schooling with my kids, mm-hmm. but that's because of a pandemic. Normally they're going to a public school five days a week in person, but now it's different, but it sounds to me like you guys were doing things different even before the pandemic hit. So tell us a little bit about how you're, how you guys are navigating that. In my case, we, I had started unschooling my oldest last year because he was to enter sixth grade at that point. And I had always been adamant 
with my husband. My children will not go to middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, I think part of that was coming from the trauma of being bullied in middle school myself. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, if it was hard for me as a girl, how much harder is it going to be for my boy? Um, Because boys can be ruthless, you know, and it was primarily boy bullies for me too. And I know that they bullied other um, male children as well. And I figured, you know, we no longer have school counselors on campus. We have so many, you know, security guards and and canines and all of that, but we don't have resources that our kids can turn Mm -hmm. to because we grew up with school counselors counselors, like multiple Mm -hmm. on campus. And now maybe a district will have one. And we were in an excellent public school system, but the whole district has like a couple of counselors that go and sit for office hours a little bit. And I'm like, this is when the school shootings happen. This is when the drugs start. This is when you start having on-campus fights. You're the brown kid. You're always going to be blamed for whatever happens, even if you were on the receiving end. And this is just from personal experience, I know. So I had explained to him, like, I understand your friends are important, but I'm doing this out of fear and love for you. And I know that once you get to high school, our relationship is going to change and you're not going to want to be around me. And maybe, you know, I'm going to be okay letting you fly a little more, but these three years, just give these to me because I need you in my life. Mm. And I wanted to connect with him. Our relationship was really the pits for mm. like the two years prior. And I, and I wanted to focus and hone down. And, I, you know, I made this prayer the Ramadan before, and I was like, make homeschooling easy for me. That was like the plan I had to ask for. I was like, make it easy for me. And the words that came out in like this big slobber of tears and snot was God just reestablish my relationship and that love with the son of mine that I prayed for my whole life. Mm. Let me connect with him again. And a week later, a very dear friend of mine started an unschooling course. She is somebody who never sent her children to school. And um, she is a master's in education. She's been a teacher at the public private level and is going back for her PhD now. And she finally, after years of my begging her, put together this course. Mm-hmm. And I took it, you know, I signed up. I was one of the first people that signed up and it was amazing and fabulous and just really solidified my need to bring my son home and gave me a way to do it. And it was the best because with unschooling, you know, for somebody who who is a lazy parent like myself. I don't want to do too much work. My kids know I hate papers. I hate projects. They will very, you know, frightened will come to me and be like, mom, it's a project, but the teacher promises it's only one every four weeks because I will just lose it. You know? right. yeah. I get really anxious and I'm like, ah, yeah. like, why do I have to do this? Right. And then, like, you are going to do this part. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did all these grades before. I don't want to do it again, yeah. you know? And I really want to do the opposite of what my parents did. But then when I was thinking about it, my parents were lazy parents parents too. They didn't check my homework. They didn't make sure everything happened. But I was one of those kids who was anxious and wanted to get all the assignments Mm -hmm. done and asked the teachers for extra homework and took home extra homework during the summer. So I didn't want that for my kids. You know, I wanted, I guess, a more relaxed approach to education. And I really wanted them to have education that meant something to them, not what meant meant something to me or what I thought they should they should learn. So with unschooling, we primarily will provide resources that the kids are interested in. So like that son, I had said, what do you want to learn? And so he made the schedule like 7.30, I'm going to have like morning routine time. And then eight o'clock, I'm going to have math and 8.30, I'm going to have reading. So exactly what he was doing in school, he set Mm -hmm. that up. So I let him sit with it for a week. And then I said, okay, baby, now if you were in charge of everything you learned, what would you want to learn? And he wanted to learn to cook. He wanted to learn to build a computer. He wanted to learn how to do laundry. He wanted to learn how to fly a drone. And by golly, that's what he did. He also wanted to read the entire Harry Potter from beginning to end without a break. Mm -hmm. And so he did those things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that means something to you. Let's do that. Uh, When it came to like building computers, I had to find a mentor in the community. Um, Luckily, we have somebody in our businesses who does all of our hardware, software stuff. And so he could walk him through some of those things. And my son realized within five minutes, he was not interested in any of it, Mm -hmm. but you know, it was good. My job is to provide the opportunities and the resources for him. And then he just completes it. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, this is beautiful. Cause my plan was everybody's going to unschool this year anyway. So as early as March, we just kind of started that when the schools closed down, we just started it. I never even really logged on to school. And I told the teachers, we've got worksheets, we've got everything. We've got an art center. Don't you worry. We are fine. Cause the teachers of course, you're freaking out. Like, we're so sorry. You're not logging on. And I was like, oh yeah, the kids are great. Like, we're fine. We're cool. And then over the summer, the oldest who had unschooled said, I don't think I'm getting a good enough education because (laughs) how am I going to be president? Because you let me do whatever I want. And I was like, that's exactly how you become president. Hello. You know, (laughs) in this country. (laughs) 
Yeah. But he recruited the others and said, let's all go back to school. And we said, there's not even an option in our district to do that. It is virtual. Would you like to do it? And they signed up for it because that's part of unschooling too. It's child-led. It's self-directed. They decided. They outvoted me. I was like, all right, I think it's a bad idea, but you all, you all want to do it, do it. They lasted five days and they said, no, we don't want to do this. But <laughs> as an unschooling parent, while self-direction is important, it's also important to teach the values um, that are important to us. And for us in our household, like commitment is important. And so you mm-hmm. committed to do this thing, making a decision after five days isn't going to give you a good picture. You need more data. After a month, if you decide the same, then okay. And mm-hmm. after a month, I mean, they were just counting down the days. My daughter was like checkboxing. Mm-hmm. How many more days? How many? I have 16 more days of this. Okay. Um, and they all withdrew after the month was over and now they're all unschooled. Okay. That is fascinating to me. Yeah. I had never heard of this concept until probably around the last year. Yeah. Um, I think in the last friend- few months, it's making a big, mm-hmm. um, yeah. big mm-hmm. in the news. A friend um, at church told me that his sister was unschooling her kids. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I've just been kind of dabbling and and trying to to understand the concept behind it and the methodology and all that Mm -hmm. good stuff. But it sounds I think it's more self-directed education is probably a better Mm -hmm. word or home Mm -hmm. education just because it's very um, individual centered without being, you know, because what we learn about public school in this country is that, you know, and America is that the individual is so important. The individual is so Mm -hmm. important. But when you look at the public school system and the history of how it came about and part of the I learned through the unschooling course is it's a product of the industrial revolution Mm -hmm. and capitalism and a lot of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. So how can you undo the systems if you're inserted in the system? Mm -hmm. You know, it's really hard to implode it from the inside. So like stepping out of it and looking at it as an observer and doing your own thing outside of it makes it a lot more easier to break down the systems and identify um, what, what, what is there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Zeba, you're homeschooling. I'm sorry, Sarah, did you have a question? Well, I, I do have a question about that. So I'm just looking back to when we were homeschooling. I mean, before COVID, we were a homeschooling family and Indiana was one of the more lax. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could kind of show your check off your days and it was pretty open. Are there benchmarks with the way that you're doing it from the state or like, how does it work with the benchmark things or how do you navigate how much of that you have to report to someone? Uh, I'm lucky in that in Arizona, it's the same thing. Like it's okay. very, um, I guess it could be detrimental that they don't have a lot of requirements out here. Like I could just basically, so when my son wanted to go back to virtual school, now he had to enter seventh grade because he was old enough to be in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting that in air quotes. They were like, do you have any documentation that he finished seventh grade? I was like, well, the state told me that I could say that he completed all of his requirements that you guys had. And I'm telling you, he, he right. completed Boom. his requirements. Documented. So he got into seventh grade. So, and they were like, well, do you have anything? I was like, well, I have a couple of things and I'm saving like his essays and some of his math um, drills that he did just because I want a portfolio because I do believe that everybody as a social um, kind of, what's the word? rite of passage needs to go through high school. Um, High school was one of the best times of my life and I would want my kids to have that experience. So to get them back into high school, even though I know statewide, they would see my kid as 14 or 15, they go into ninth grade because we Mm -hmm. very much believe that age determines your Mm. learning level and your intelligence level. They would insert him into ninth grade. And he was like, well, I'm already doing like algebra in sixth grade. Like, are they going to make me do algebra again? It's like quite possibly they may, but if you're Mm going to get straight A's, oh, well. So I had a couple of those (laughs) items saved up for high school, but it wasn't anything like standardized test. It was something that I opted out of anyway, annually, because I didn't want my kids to stress out about standardized tests. I knew they meant nothing except to terrorize our public school teachers and, you know, put their compensation tag that. It's like, no, sorry, my kids aren't going to play this game. Mm. You continue to terrorize your teachers. So. Gotcha. Wow. Take that state. Yeah. I, mean, exactly. I think my, you. my big takeaway from what you're saying is like, I'm inspired by how much you know what's right for you guys mm-hmm. and that it's working. Like that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's the goal, right? It's yeah. like find your happy place and stick to it and don't be afraid, you know, to speak your truth and to live the life that you need to live for your children and for you. 
Yeah. Very cool. Zeba, how did you guys get to homeschooling? I'm a homeschooling parent through COVID, to be honest with you. Like Mm -hmm. I saw how crazy it was. In fairness, my older two are doing virtual high school because they were not allowed to be homeschoolers and participate. Um, They're both basketball players, so they couldn't be on the basketball team or try out for the team unless you are um, enrolled in virtual high school. So they couldn't, we had to take that off the table for them. Um, but for my younger two, I'd always toyed or talked. And obviously Uzma um, had this example with the, um, with the unschooling. I'm too crazy to go that way. You know, I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm like, oh my God, I don't think I can do the unschooling thing. So there has to be something a little bit And the same thing when COVID hit, I essentially emailed, I had a good enough relationship with the teachers that I'm like, I'm not attempting to even log in to whatever nonsense you guys are doing. We'll take care of it. But I do a more traditional homeschooling where, um, and though Virginia is lax as well, and my kids have never done the SOLs and things like that, but I'm more OCD about it where I'm like, I need a math curriculum. I need an English curriculum. I'd like to do, we have our day set up. We start the day at nine. I built out a full classroom. Um, we go from nine to 1130. The kids have a, a break for two hours. And then we go from 130 to four in our traditional, I'm just, you know, whereas I'm teaching them, but I, I need more of that guidance because I appreciate where Uzma is coming from, but I'm like, I need to make sure that they're hitting their own benchmark. So, you know, I'm going through that curriculum with them. Um, and I have to say, I love every single minute of it because like on Fridays we have half days. So, and I, we have half days on purpose because we record in the afternoons or, or we do these types of fun things. Um, and now I've had an art teacher start coming to the house. So she does all that gross, messy stuff that I have no interest in doing. <laughs> I set yeah. it out. So they're still giving their art. They're still doing all of that, but I'm like somebody else. So I do outsource the things that that, you know, I can't do like art. It's not in my wheelhouse. And um, obviously they wanted to learn Spanish. So we have a Spanish teacher. Um, so I, I'm privileged enough where I do have help um, in addition to everything. So I want to be honest and upfront about it. But I set the curriculum. I set the pacing. I do like projects. I know I'm very different than Osma where that's concerned. I'm like, let's do this project. So we're doing ancient Rome, right? That's what we're learning about right now. So my kids are building a mosaic birdhouse because they used a lot of mosaic in their art and architecture. So I'm like, this is what you're doing. And this is why. Um, so yeah, I'm that mom that really enjoys, I probably was a teacher in another life. Um, and I don't really <laughs> like other people's children, but I do like my own. So we're having a really good time homeschooling right now. And we probably are going to stick to it because what I did find specifically with my number three, that I was like, how in the world was he not di- diagnosed with like ADHD? Like, I don't know. And so he's now getting the help. You know, we're, we're doing, starting the process. Cause I'm like, like he would just get up in the middle of the conversation. And I'm like, how did your teachers deal with this? And I realized they probably didn't because he would come home and break down and not want to go to school. And, and now all that makes so much sense to me because he was probably holding his SHIT together the entire day <laughs> yeah, and then coming home and letting it out, you know? And I was like, how in the world did I put you in that? situation where you had to feel like that. And so he's definitely less anxious now, but in homeschooling him, I'm noticing how my kids are learning, what's their strengths and weaknesses, because I am more involved in their education than I would have been um, pre-COVID. So on some levels, COVID really helped um, enlighten me on the discrepancies in the education system, the fact that a lot of things don't work. I don't like the standardized testing. And quite frankly, we're learning about the things like Osma says that they want. So they're free to learn about like their history and science that's open. So we, they tell me what they want and then I plan a curriculum around it, but I do have a set math and English um, curriculum. Very cool. I know, you know, one of the things that kind of brought us together is when you guys reached out is, you know, finding other moms who are parenting from a faith perspective. Did your faith inform these decisions for your schooling? It doesn't 
No. I didn't hear you say that. No. But I just wanted to ask if that influenced, because I know some homeschooling families, that yeah, is are. the driving force. Yeah, that is force. the driving force. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't hear that from you all. No, not at all. Um, and, and if anything, I'm I'm more, like my husband, for instance, is more about they need to be involved in their local community and active. And, and we're still doing some sports here. They can't go to school, but they can play sports. Right. So <laughs> let's talk about priorities. Um, but that having been said, we're going to take advantage of it because that is the way that they socialize. My kids are super athletic. Athletic in the sense that they they're involved in a lot of different travel teams and and so they get enough socialization from that perspective in the areas that they want to socialize right like they're with people that know how to do their thing and they love that but mm-hmm. faith really doesn't have I mean unfortunately my kids don't have any Muslim friends I mean that's the truth of it it's I have a, di- a different um, experience in Uzma so I can't speak to her we don't really have um, a community per se um, I came from a community. Chicago was a very vibrant Muslim community, but in coming to the DC metro area, I haven't found my people yet. Um, And that's okay because, you know, we're involved in a lot of different activities and yeah, faith doesn't necessarily play a role in the homeschooling aspect. That having been said, I am, I do now have more time to talk more about our family values. And I do indoctrinate that in the lessons that we're doing, which obviously is informed by faith. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not because, oh, I wanted to keep you home so that you can become, you know, like the next, next Islamic leader. Right. Right. I think in other traditions, maybe people don't want like creationism taught or, you know, we don't have that problem. Mm Because we don't have a problem with creationism as Muslims. I mean, we believe in the same Adam was created from nothing story. But, Mm -hmm. you know, to me as a Muslim, primordial soup makes complete sense. Like there's Mm -hmm. absolutely no reason why not. Um, And we also believe that there are some questions that we will always have that God will not answer right now. And that's in his wisdom. There is knowledge that is never to be known by humanity and Mm -hmm. that's okay. So we don't, um, I don't think I know any Muslims who pull out their children. Oh, I take that back. Some Muslims will pull out their kids because they don't want them to have sex ed. But Mm -hmm. um, we are also taught in Islam that there is no modesty in religion Mm -hmm. and you are supposed to talk about all things, period, sex erection, um, abstinence, uh, education (laughs) is very big for us. But if kids learn safe sex or learn about STDs, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Um, The majority of American Muslims will say that at least. And we've already had these conversations with our kids when they were like, we've talked about this two and three. Right. So um, that is not uh, a reason for us. What I enjoy is that it gives my kids more time to be able to explore like Islamic history, Islamic art and architecture, things that would um, never be taught in school because Mm -hmm. it's from a very Eurocentric perspective. So we're able to get, you know, some of our history in there too, which is nice. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I also, I guess it's probably a metaphor for anything outside of school that whatever gives you as the parent and your household the most peace or joy or inspiration is really the gift you give. It's it's not math. It's not all these things. So for you, Uzma saying, having that unschooling, having that self child directed, like that's giving you peace, that's giving them peace, but that would stress you out, Zayla. Oh, so yeah, 100%. It's, I guess whatever it is, whether it's health or food, we're it's like very funny. different, which is so funny. <laughs> yeah. And yet we're it's like working. the opposite end, but it works. But yeah, we're like, yeah. you know, so, yeah, that's listen great. to our abortion episode, we think totally different about that, uh-huh. different thing about that. And I was like, are we going to fight? And she's like, no, we're not. Why would we and fight? We're grown ups. Fight about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so I feel like, you know, in honest discourse, in being respectful and mindful of somebody else's belief or faith position, regardless of what that happens to be, even if you're within the same faith um, tradition mm-hmm. means you're being mindful and respecting of somebody else's viewpoints. And I don't have to agree with you to respect you. And I don't have to agree with you to, to be, you know, open to what you have to say. It's not going to contradict what I believe or my belief system. So that's for me, one of the biggest things. And I think Osman and I work so well together because I feel, feel like she comes from a very similar place as far as belief system is concerned, even though we probably are on two different spectrums of, of what Islam has to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us how you guys came together to form this podcast, Mommying While Muslim. What does that look like for you all? I think this is Zima's baby. (laughs) Yeah, so um, first of all, the funny story about Uzma and myself is our dads were actually roommates, bachelors in the 70s in Chicago. Um, So that is our claim to fame. So they, of course, became, you know, married. And I think Uzma and her... Osma's parents were one of like the six guests invited to my parents' um, wedding because my dad met my mom and within four months they got married. So, um, and in Islam, you have to have witnesses and um, my mom converted to Islam apparently that day and also um, had her wedding that day. So I think all of that, her, her parents were witness to that whole journey. So that's the fun we're, so we're family um, friends where that's concerned. Yeah. She shortly after that, they moved to Chicago and we stayed in Chicago. My parents but, said if hell could have a winter, it would be Chicago. It would be Chicago. <laughs> they left hell for Texas. <laughs> They're like, we're, we're leaving. We're leaving Chicago. But yeah, so in, um, a couple of years ago, we were coming back from Chicago. Um, we go for six weeks uh, every year. We did pre-COVID. This is our first year not going. So mm-hmm. it was really sad for us. And I go back and forth. My husband um, works uh, and not, then he comes on the weekends. Like we we just we just make it work because so, our entire family still lives there. So we I wanted my kids to have a close relationship with their family members, and we just live in Chicago for six to eight weeks a year. Um, so we were coming home from one of these trips, and my son was about to enter high school, and he he's a bigger kid, and he was wearing a Northwestern shirt, and he was in front of me in the line. I was behind with the other three. I still I think I still had a stroller, and you know, you hold all that stuff and you're trying to get there and you're like, I have, you know, I'm coming up and you guys go ahead. And, um, and then I was noticing that he was getting, getting a hard, given a hard time. And I was like, what is going on? And finally I kind of had my daughter talk to my younger two kids and I'm like, okay, watch them. They go up and the guy was giving him the hardest time. Where's your, where's your ID? Why do you not have one? What's in your bag? Pull them aside, all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, what? is going on right now. And finally, ultimately, I think 20 to 30 minutes later, after I convinced him he was only 14. 20 um, to 30 minutes? Oh, yes. We were pulled to the side, uh, (laughs) like to let other people go through. And I'm by myself. So my instinct was to be angry or aggressive. I'm not going to lie, because I was kind of like, taco us? Yeah. (laughs) But I was also like, I can't do that. Because they can just put us in a different room. And I said, no, I'm by myself here. Nobody knows what's going on. I can't get a hold of my husband, who, by the mm-hmm. way, is an attorney, by the way. And mm-hmm. um, and he was essentially, make a long story short, they finally, we answered enough questions where they felt, okay, he can go through without an ID. They believed he was only 14. And as we you know, get our stuff, and of course, my bags are open and I'm putting everything back in, my son was kind of like, what? was that about? And I had to tell him, you know, honey, like, this is probably something you're going to have to get used to because that's called being racially profiled right there. Like Mm -hmm. you're, you were seen as a Muslim boy before, and now you're seen as a Muslim man and you're going to be looked at differently. And you have to know that. And my son is a little bit darker complected. Obviously I've always quote unquote passed. So like, I've never really had these types of experiences before. And I was so overwhelmed that, you know, and of course I'm calling my husband, I'm complaining and, and looking for the answers as to like, how could I have handled this differently? How can I explain this to my son without putting it in negative terms? I found that there was nothing out there um, because we're in a very unique generation where we were born, our generation was born and raised here, right? So we have a connection because our parents of some sort, whether it's one or two parents came from another country. But our kids have zero connection to any of those other countries. So they feel 100% American and cannot understand why they were being treated this way. Right. Mm -hmm. So in my quest to find a solution and coming up short, I called my childhood friend, Uzma. And this is the famous part of the story. She was like... Osma, you can take over, my dearest. <laughs> like, what idiot Muslim travels in the United States after 9-11 without their ID? Yes, but I didn't say that. <laughs> what a friend. I, know, I had no I didn't clue. say that. Because I was shocked. I still remember what intersection I was driving at. I think I drove through a red light. Because I was like, she did what? Yeah. <laughs> because my children, we traveled domestically um, a lot. 
and internationally as well. But even like once I had kids, we would travel domestically. I had a one week old on a plane in a carrier and he had a passport because we made sure we got all of these things like very quickly turned around so that I would never be stopped. And I believe as a mother, even before I was a mother, how could you let an infant on a plane with just anybody? They could be kidnapped. They could be child traffic. Why wouldn't you check a child's, you know, and I would even get the letter from my husband that I was traveling with his children, with our children. Um, I wasn't kidnapping them. Nobody has ever asked for that. But that's my anxiety, right? Like that should be protections that we have in place in this country to, if we really cared about child trafficking, we would make sure that stuff is done. But obviously it's just lip service. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and I knew from being body frisked at the airport shortly shortly after 9-11 strip searched and my brother disappeared at JFK for three hours because they can not only pull you out for 20 to 30 minutes, they put you in a separate room. You're not allowed, they take your cell phone so you can't make any phone calls. They don't notify your families. They don't notify the connecting flight and they take you and interrogate you and try to entrap you in many ways. Mm -hmm. I've had a state letter from the state department saying that I'm going on a medical mission trip and still got pulled into that room for an hour. Like what, what wow. kind of medical interventions were you providing? You know, it's like, well, we don't plant bombs inside of people, that you know, wondering. <laughs> you do vaginal <laughs> exams and blood pressure and all that. So you still have to always prove yourself, but that's for somebody like me, who's physically different looking. And my, my garb is obviously very identifying. Zeba son made the mistake of looking different. And so I had these experiences that I felt like I could share with Zeba and kind of educate her on it. But I said, okay, I think her specific ask was like, what do we have for moms that go through yeah. this? Where do our kids go when this happens to mm-hmm. them? And we couldn't find any place. And she said, well, would you be willing to come on a podcast to talk about this? And I said, sure, what's a podcast? Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started doing my research. She was going to research about how to start one. And in the meantime, I started listening to them. And for me, the inspiration was Jen Hatmaker, Mm -hmm. um, whose message is there's enough room for everybody at the table. I felt so inspired as a non-Christian woman with her message that I was like, oh my God, I wish more Muslim women listen to you mm-hmm. because that would be great. But I know what the mentality is for a lot of the Muslim community, even the Muslim American community. If you hear too much about the gospel, you hear too much you know, love in Christ, it just automatically turns it off or Christ is my savior. They, they're done. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to be the Muslim gen hat maker. Yeah, yeah girl. And then I called Zeba and I was like, let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> and then it went from this theoretical idea to she's like, and I'm like, what? I wasn't quite ready. For she was this. not. So and kicking and screaming, yeah. I made her launch it. <laughs> yeah. Ready for this? And I'm so thankful she did because it's always, you know, like I said, God comes into different people's lives for a reason. And we have now successfully, I feel like, um, created a platform for other American Muslim moms, we specifically focus on the mom story and their and embracing their kids. And, um, and, and the beauty is we get to come on amazing podcasts like yourselves and other Christian podcasts and really kind of break down those stereotypes that we're not that scary, like we're willing to talk to you. And, you know, you'll, you could be sitting next to me at a basketball or baseball game, and we would probably have more in common than mm-hmm. difference. And, and that is perhaps how we we should be approaching um, our our connectivity, you mm-hmm. know, is from this place of, okay, you know, your son plays basketball or teenagers are grumpy and gross, you know, it doesn't matter what religion <laughs> you are, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, 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 and connecting that way, I feel like you break down um, stereotypes and build bridges. Absolutely. And if there's a religion where they're not grumpy and gross, I'd be yeah. the convert. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love you know, your room. Why does this room smell so bad? Right. Uh, oh yeah, there's some pizza still underneath your bed. I'm not Forget about it. the pizza. I tried to walk into my son's room this morning and got hit with a wall of bo. I was like, "When was the last time you showered, man? Right. It was awful." <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, it's so beautiful and inspiring. And I do feel like, I not only feel like we have so much in common, but I mean, I really commend Julie because I feel like she does great work in supporting this idea that are respecting each other. Like I wrote down what you said, Zeva. I don't have to agree with you to respect you. Right. I mean, that is so key to, to the kindness and the compassion the world needs and so much of what we're about. And I, I see Julie set that up and how she posts about really anything. And it's, I have one of my albums, I'm a songwriter. Oh, um, I love that. About, 
is all about this idea of reconciliation. And the key song on there is we're all the same because it's yeah. exactly what you're saying. We, we have way more in common than we do different. And I would in no means say that we were suffering the same type of, uh, I don't know. Um, grievances. Grievances, um, profiling. But I understand to a different degree, perhaps, mm-hmm. what it feels like to not be represented by people's understanding of your faith. Right. And I feel like Julie and I, that's been a, a common theme of this podcast is while I am a believer in Jesus and his redemptive love, I don't feel represented by evangelicalism. Mm. And I, I recognize that part in you that's saying our country is not representing Muslims correctly or with truth, or the idea has been skewed somehow for a number of reasons. That part now, in, in, in my case, I feel like a lot of people are skewing it themselves. <laughs> But, and they and, do that through misinformation, right? Yeah, like if yeah. you've never met a Muslim person before. Absolutely. You, and, and it's the same for me. If I have, and I'm going to be honest with you, like Uzma and I have gone on a little faith tour and we were, you know, invited by a lot of evangelicals. We were scared. We were scared. Uh-huh. We also were scared. We're like, why are you inviting us? Are right. you we thought we were going to be us? attacked on air. We're so. like, what's going to happen? Okay, and brace. we are still <laughs> super friendly. And they're, and they're, they're dads. They're evangelical <laughs> they're, dads. <laughs> and we found things in common and that is the beauty right and yeah. that is america like when you yeah. actually go to what the core of america is supposed to be what well, it was supposed to be right uh-huh. I'm not saying what it is or what it was we're not right. going to get into that but we can go as american muslims moms and one of the guys even asked us, does your husband know that you're on a show with men? I don't remember that question. Do you remember that? That was oh, the first wow. one. And we were like, yeah, our husbands don't care. You know, and like, right. that's the first thing, I don't think you know. We have our own podcast. <laughs> they were just like, what the heck? They don't, like, we're like, you can't be on our show. You, We don't care what you have to say. But that's my point is like, he's not going to know yeah. any better Unless he asks the questions right. and you have to be open and receptive to answering the questions, mm-hmm. even if it makes you uncomfortable, because at the end we can agree to disagree and still respect each other Yeah, and respect like the fact that, you know, you also are not being represented by your faith group. Like I get that and, mm-hmm. and I feel for you and you just start your own thing, girl. That's, that's yeah. my philosophy. If yeah. it's not there for you, build it for somebody else. And, and exactly. that, I'm so thankful that we have this podcast in an effort to, like you said, um, we're not having people on to bring them to our side or our platform or our, it is absolutely a hundred percent because we believe we have something to celebrate in you, something yeah. to learn from you. And right. and my, my feeling is that you're here under that same Yes. Hope so. Like, I want to listen to your songs now. I'm excited. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, this, I see the piano. I want to break out into song. I was listening to Hamilton before we came oh, here. Like, see, I'm all about that. that. We could spend a whole see after our see? podcast on Cards Against Humanity, then we'll yes. Hamilton. We'll do a Hamilton. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, all of us singing Hamilton together. Like, how fun is that? Yeah, right. Yeah. So good. Da, 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 mm-hmm. da, 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 da. Yep. <laughs> I hate to even like turn a corner, but. Sorry. Really? Should we get to the stories? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We want to hear. No, I, I love this. <laughs> this is awesome. So we want you to tell a story you want to remember, as well as one you wish you could forget. Mm-hmm. Where would you like to take us first? Do you want to I'll remember first or you want to forget first? Let's always remember first. Yeah, remembrance is good. <gasps> yeah. um, and my oh. disclaimer is, I wish... Because momnesia is a term that I've always used. Mm -hmm. And then I was so happy to see that there's a podcast name for it. Because I was like, oh, thank goodness there's a place. Which, by the way, Ozma got so mad because we found another momnesia. We were really mad. Do you know there's another mom? You know we yes. were really mad too. We were really mad, mad. too. <laughs> I think do we should know? all write a collective I letter. I won't say we hate them, but no, I'm just kidding. Okay. I, I don't like, know who do they you are. Know but there's another one. I was like, oh no. We're but they're saving graces that they're gone, right? Yeah, they only okay. had like they're, a few episodes. They popped okay, in, sorry. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys are there for the long haul. <laughs> we're the real ones. Yes. Right. So. Even though we can't remember anything. So yeah. my disclaimer <laughs> exactly. is I wish I could remember all those moments mm-hmm. in the quiet dark when you're nursing those newborns mm-hmm. because you know those moments don't come back. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to remember what somebody's face looks like in the middle of the night. But um, aside <laughs> from that, a story I want to remember is uh, being at Kmart. 
in the checkout line uh, many years ago. I was with my kids picking up some photos because y'all remember Olin Mills, the photography oh, studio? Oh, yes, girl. So yes. In, in Arizona, they were in Kmart. You might remember this, Julie. Um, and of course, I was picking up these pictures a full year after I took them because mom life and momnesia. Yes. Right. Um, I went back and we picked up our photos. And at the time I had a five-year-old, a four-year-old and a brand new two-year-old. And what we did was like positive reinforcement, at least with the older two at that time. And it seemed like a good idea to give them money for doing like little works in mm-hmm. in the house. And so it was like a dollar a day or 50 cents a day. Yeah. The whole goal was that by Saturday, they had $4 because they needed $4 to buy those $4 books in Barnes and Noble because we used to go for story time. Yeah. 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 And so after story time, their treat was they got to buy a book and take it home, you know, with their own money. So we were trying to teach a little bit of, you know, fiscal responsibility and, you know, responsibility, work ethic kind of, kind of stuff. So we're at the Kmart checkout line, my four-year-old, the middle guy, you know, he saw this DVD and I can't even remember for the life of me what movie it was, but it was child appropriate, but it was like $20. Okay. And he said, mom, I want this. And I said, well, that's $20 and that's more money than you have. And, but you do have $4. Do you want to put it towards that? He said, no, because I need my money for my book. You have money. Can't you just buy it for me? And then, you know, it kind of spurred the conversation of, well, you know, I could just buy it for you, but I work really hard for my money. You work really hard for your money, don't you? And I think it was like, literally they picked up their toys you know, okay. maybe that that's what it was yeah. or put the folded laundry back. Right. In the we drawer remember our us, kids you know? are all spoiled. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah they yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I knew that, um, there was no way like mathematically he could earn $20 in a week. I just kind of wanted, um, to impart this, this knowledge to him that he wasn't getting the DVD, but I wanted to talk it through with him. And, you know, I explained to him, I was like, well, you know, I mean, doesn't, I mean, has money, but she doesn't have money for the DVD. She has money for other things. I, and I think we were buying like M&Ms at the checkout. So I had right. money for that. Um, <laughs> and my pictures. M&Ms. Yeah. Um, and I, I think at the time, it just seemed like the best way to teach him um, that Ami's money is earned by working and she's already decided what she wants to spend it on. She doesn't want to spend it on a DVD. And Ami is just mom in Urdu, um, our household language. So, you know, we're having this conversation and I think he was thinking about how to earn money. He was like, well, how can I get money? And I was like, well, think about the ways that you can get money. And while he, he quieted down, this older lady was in front of us and she turned around and she said, good job, mom. You're teaching him the right way. You're doing a really good job. And she was older, you know, your blue haired lady, like she was a blue haired lady and my population, people that I love. So I don't know what was better for me was where it came from, but also the word she said meant so much. Cause I mean, bear in mind, I have three kids at this point, but that was the first moment where I felt like, shit, maybe I'm doing this right. Mm. You know, so for three children, I lived like a shell of a person, like not believing in myself, not believing in my motherhood, not having the confidence, asking everybody and their mom and their sister and their grandma, like, how do I do this? How do I do this? Where's the manual? Like, am I supposed to do this? Am I, you know, what school, what food, what clothes, what where, you know, what vacation, what enrichment activity, what, 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 what? And all along this very simple, very organic thing that we had started and we're talking about was, oh, okay. And for the first time that shell of me filled up Hmm. and I, that was the moment I gained confidence in my motherhood because I had not gotten it. You know, everybody else would always be like, oh, you have so many kids and how do you do it? And you're such a superwoman and you're working and you're this. And it's all, it's all the stuff that was bouncing off the shell because none of it fills you. If anything, Mm -hmm. it disempowers you even more because now you have like imposter syndrome on steroids, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So that wasn't helpful. But this lady just turning around and saying, you're doing such a good job Mm -hmm. was so important. And that's part of what we want to do at the podcast is like, tell moms, you are amazing Mm -hmm. because you brought life into this world. And maybe if that person is still not living, you are still a mom. Like you are birthing miracles every day. Freaking you are a miracle. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that to me, I think is really important to impart that, that message to, to moms everywhere that you, you, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. And you are perfect just the way you are. And I think we don't say it enough to moms in the, with the right language. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad that that woman in the Kmart shopping line followed that nudge to say something because mm-hmm. I'm sure she had no idea 
the impact that it was going to have on you and your life and your motherhood journey. But she was willing to, to turn around and just speak that encouragement. Like what a gift Mm -hmm. it was. I cried all the way to the car. Yes. (laughs) I bet. I love that. Who knew you could get Slurpees and mom wisdom at Kmart, right? And photos. And and photos. photos. (laughs) It's it's funny to me hearing anybody say, do you know who Olin Mills is? Because I feel like the church people kept them in business for so long with the church (laughs) directories. I don't know if that's a thing anywhere else in the world, but those church directories. Yeah. Do mosques have directories? No, no. no. We just literally <laughs> take phones to their cameras and maybe we FedEx them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that that is like a deal. thing where yeah, we don't have directors. comes in and they take pictures of all the families. Wow. Then you have this church. It's like a yearbook, like a church. Oh, uh-huh. That's so cute. So you can see all the families and then it has like their contact information. Yeah. I mean, not anymore, um, right? I guess with Facebook. Yeah. We, I haven't seen it in years and years, but it was a thing. Yeah. It used to be a That's thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Now camera just closed down. FYI. Yeah. At least My uh, best friend and I in seventh grade or so, we went to Olin Mills and got pictures taken as if we were like siblings. <laughs> But it's seventh better grade, than the glamour shots. Glamour shots. You remember glamour shots? <laughs> yeah, I don't think glamour shots were a thing yet. In seventh grade? Or maybe oh, we weren't allowed school. to do it because it I was don't racy, know. right? Yeah. Because your makeup you dressed done. up, put your makeup with the big hair. Yeah. I never did that, but I recently I found my mom's. I, I didn't even remember. She had done it. That's oh, awesome. Good for her. I mean, she was, I don't know if I was away at college. I mean, it was like in the last. Well, you know, some some people are doing years. those boudoir shoot uh-huh. yes, for their FYI, husband. FYI, I did those. Are you Oh, kidding? yeah. Hell yeah. I just, I'd be scared. We'll have to talk about that later. Oh my God, you're like, get it. I'm right here. (laughs) She's the prude in the relationship. Oh no. I'm like, (laughs) like she'll tell me something. I'm like, stop doing that. I don't want to know that right now. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) Well, I love the work you're doing. I mean, you're empowering people to trust themselves, which is the biggest gift Really? That's cool. Zeba, do you have a story you want to forget for us? I have lots of stories I, I want to forget. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we have enough time, but we're in regards to parenting probably is what you guys want to know. So I'm just <laughs> trying to think, <laughs> what do I want to forget? You know, I was lucky in the sense that I think I've always known that I want to be a mom. I was 24 with my first one. So I, I started a little bit earlier. But it was just one of those things where I just knew this is what I wanted to do. This is what's going to fulfill me. Um, and I and I felt blessed. Though, the one thing I probably would want to forget is for that first 18 months of my firstborn. So let's go back to what happened. My We were in Chicago. I had a whole, ha- you know, whole bunch of people to support me. Um, my husband actually lost his job because of September 11th. Mm. Um, and we had a court case and all that good stuff. So we had to leave Chicago to come to DC where he ended up getting an appointment with the SEC to work on the Martha Stewart case at the time. So this is how long ago (laughs) that was. So we were like, we'll do a six month stint. He's like, I'll get some experience and we'll be back in Chicago. So, you know, my son was only eight weeks old and I was like, sure, this sounds like an adventure. We will do this. I was working until literally the day he was born. Um, and then I come as a new mom and I'm totally by myself in a a city I don't even know. And I think I, and obviously in hindsight, I probably had postpartum depression. Now I can recognize that being, um, being a more experienced mother, uh, and to the point where we would just lay in bed and I would just be like, I don't know what to do with you. Like, and it literally was, I would just sit him down. He'd just kind of look at me with his big brown eyes. And I'd just be like, I don't know what the heck, because my husband would be gone. He was working on this case. He was gone early in the morning, didn't come. And I'm alone, um, by myself, away from my family, sleep deprived. The sleep deprivation was key, which started my journey <laughs> and, yeah. and sleep training and doing oh, yeah. all of that. So I'm, I'm a big believer in mama's need breath. Um, and it wasn't until I got pregnant with my daughter where he was still sleeping, where now that I was like, I need to do something because I cannot move on to that next child feeling the way that I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, and I, to this day, feel badly because I don't remember 
his first 18 months as much as I'd like to. One, I was in a sleep deprived fog. I get that. I didn't have the help and support, which is why I'm a big believer in trying to support other people. Now I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with my other three kids, because I had a different perspective, I enjoy every second. I mean, even the sleep deprivation, like as I was saying, you forget in the night, I would hold those babies, nurse them and know at some point I'm not doing this. And I enjoyed every second of it. But with my oldest, I did not And to this day, I feel guilty about it. Granted, Mm -hmm. he and I are super close and all that. So all that eventually comes out and they do forget, you know, what people say they do forget, but I can't ever forget that I loved him, but I wasn't engaged with mm-hmm. him because I was just living, waking up, doing the things, kept him alive, and I wasn't interacting. And I wish I can go back and change that. That's probably my biggest um, mom. I wish I could forget mm-hmm. to this day. So that's yeah. why I sneak into his room in the middle of the night and just stare at him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As his feet are off the bed and they're big and stinky, <laughs> but I'm just like, oh my God, I love every bit of you now because I, I did miss out on that, that journey that was, I have to look back at pictures and be yeah. like, oh, this is how it, it was. Cause mm-hmm. I don't remember it as well as I wish I did. Yeah. Now I'm going to cry and I'm going to not cry. Cause I told those mom, I'm not going to cry. And I'm just, she just made us cry the last one. So. I just cry all day long. That's why I didn't wear my makeup today. Cause I'm like, I know I'm going to be crying. I wore my blue eyeliner in homage to princess die today. And Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Yeah. Blue eyeliner. I'm going to go find my blue Why eyeliner. are we talking about Princess Diana today? Oh, I don't know. I just, every time I wear blue oh, eyeliner, t- I think of oh, her. Uh, I was like, yeah. should I be Googling something I right was, now? I was thinking, I'm like, I don't think this is the day she passed no, away. It's not. Is, is it? it? No, no, no. I, oh, yeah. oh, that's no. what I thought you were ago. saying. Because I, I remember I went to college, though. I remember where I was. And I was thinking, okay, it was fall. It was okay. fall. You're just it saying- was the night of the freshman bonfire, Sarah. Oh, oh yeah. Bonfire. Yeah. There were a lot of weird things that are bonfire Uh-oh. that happened. Should we tell them about the um, freshman hike? Yes. Now I need to know about this freshman hike. <laughs> Is this something hike. you want to remember or something you want to forget? Yeah. <laughs> well, Sarah, you have to talk about it because I didn't experience it. I started what? at Ohio State. Oh. And transferred, oh. so I, I didn't even know that, Julie. Yes. Oh my gosh! We are discovering News. some amazing things today. Okay. Well, on this there was podcast. this. <laughs> there was this thing. It was what year would they don't do it anymore? But it was called the freshman hike, and basically they would line up all the girls and all the guys, oh. and you would hold hands, you know, each down line, oh. and then they would rotate like every two minutes and. Then kids, upperclassmen kids, would be yelling during this walk, like, <laughs> meet your mate, or like oh. little sayings. And then you would go, and it was like around the campus to a certain rock. And I mean, it was funny. Like, it was it was funny. But now I'm like, I cannot believe in my lifetime we did this did antiquated, yeah. normative thing. <laughs> Yes. Well, did, let me ask you this. Did anybody actually meet their mate that night? Because that would be a cool story. Yeah. I mean, there are always like stories that that yeah. legends. Happen. Yeah. I don't think anybody, we know. I don't think that happened. No. Well, that's what HL and Sandy Baker say. Oh, really? That they met on that. <laughs> okay. And I did meet my roommate's mate. Roommate's <laughs> mate. Oh, that's good. My roommate's mate. Yeah. We did always talk set up about that match. No, it had nothing to do with it. But okay. we always talk about how like, that was when I first met him, was holding his hand for an awkward oh. two minutes. I mean, it wasn't even that walking. It's a it little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. That That's is a very intimate experience. It's very it's intimate. Really interesting. Yeah. Push upon people. And why did they yeah. stop that? Did something bad because happen? Because it's hike? a very intimate experience. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, you well, I'll hold your hand. <laughs> I don't I'll think hold there was any I definitely one, am not holding your yeah, hand now. <laughs> one straw that broke the camel's back, but, you know, it was a pretty I don't know heavy bale of, hail, <laughs> bale of hay that, <laughs> that broke it. Um, okay, so back to your stories. I know. Back to Zayba. I'm Sorry. Like, I mean, I'm probably going to cry, too. Like, I And I really resonate with that with my second. And I've gone back <laughs> with the proper help and counseling and meds yes. and processed for me, there's a, um, 
scripture in Joel that talks about God redeeming the year of the locust and making up time on a linear thing where you can't really make up time. It's fleeting. And just, I guess, even whether it's literally or figuratively, the idea that this will work out, the math will work out in the end, that Mm -hmm. the guilt of that or the the loss of that, um, we're not bound by that construct of time. Right. When we when we are all tapping into something bigger than, than earth. So I don't know. I've sat with that a lot though, myself of like, I just wish I could go back Mm -hmm. and enjoy or, or, or be able to tell that person, which was me that, you know what, it does get better. And I think it is harder when you're in the thick of it and you don't feel like there's an end, right? Like Mm -hmm. uh, the days are long, but the years are short, right? That concept of when you're in the thick of it, it's like Groundhog's Day over Mm -hmm. and over and over again. And instead of breaking that cycle of that Groundhog's Day being like, okay, today is different because he giggled for the first time or he this, or and embracing those small small moments, which I did. I made it a a choice, a conscientious choice to do with my other three kids. So like, it's so funny because my oldest is like, you're just so much more relaxed. And I'm like, yeah, because I know whatever this is, even if it's a turmoil, even if I'm tumultuous or it's, it's going to end at some Mm -hmm. point. And so why focus on that? Let's focus on, you know, the little moments and mm-hmm. really re- remember that. Um, but we made, we made up for, for less, like he's still, I mean, this guy's six foot he two. Is still, he uh-huh. is a mama's boy. He is a mama's boy. He will cuddle in my bed. We will talk about like, he's texting me now. You've been gone for three hours. When are you coming home? <laughs> and you know, but that's the point, right? Like, you can make up for it. Like there is no end. And and that's the one thing I like to tell moms when I do share this story is that you think it's done, but it's not. And even as adults, you can work on your relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I'm doing with my own mother, right? We Mm -hmm. did not have the best relationship growing up. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to understand who you are as a separate entity, a separate person because I want to fix that. Like, I want to get to know you as who you are right now. And maybe that's good enough. Maybe I don't know the 18 month old, you know, with his sullen brown eyes, but guess what? I know this, you know, quirky teenager now who, you know, gives me a hard time if I don't make him cheese quesadillas with the right cheese, but you know, we're getting to know who they are as people. And part of the journey of motherhood is seeing them become their own person Mm -hmm. separate and apart from you. There's something like magical about that. Like, it's like you can create these people, but they're their own, Mm -hmm. you you know, so you can just get to know who they are today and forgive yourself, allow yourself the forgiveness to know that you're not perfect. You never will be. Right. Um, But we're all doing the best that we can with what we have in the moment. And that's good enough. Yeah. It's your first time around too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're figuring it. It's like you're your two souls figuring out that yeah. thing at the Why same time. Why are we time. connected? Why are we connected? How did right. this even happen? <laughs> like, yeah. what, but you're connected for life, right? Like uh-huh. eternity, hopefully, if God allows that. Uh-huh. And it's, it's a journey. Like parenting uh-huh. is a tough, I always say for every three good thing, for every three bad things, there's like one good thing. Mm-hmm. But the beauty is we that's focus on the one. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's generous. One. But you said like a ten to one. But you focus so. Much. I think that's the beauty of God, right? That He allows us the momnesia to forget the nine bad things and focus on the good thing and be like, okay, it was worth it. Right. And my mom says that on. it's from God, you know, that yeah. forgetting that you have. My mom was a no epidural mom because um, in the late seventies when she was reproducing, um, they had <laughs> epidurals, but they had that very uh, back home mentality of, oh, if you get an epidural, it will paralyze you. Yeah, um, And scary. she had nobody here. She was alone. So her mom was in here. She has no sister. So it was literally my dad was like her encyclopedia of information. And he said, they will paralyze you. So she decided to have a very painful birth. And, you know, if you've done that, good on you. I had epidurals on all of mine and one of them yeah. twice. So that's okay. Yeah. Um, so she, um, she said, it's from God because that pain is so mm-hmm. awful. And that baby comes in your arms and it's like gone. 
Mm-hmm. Like you forget everything that happened in pregnancy, all the times you passed out just having a bowel movement. And I'm oh like, what? God, I hate what kind of pregnancy that. is that, mom? Oh, no, nobody <laughs> talks about that. I know. Yes. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, your dad found me on the floor to clean me up. It was awful. And <laughs> she's going to hate me for sharing that. <laughs> We right. all have um, had that story, we, okay? We it, yeah. <laughs> I have not, thank God. No, really? I have never had my husband. No, I asked him to shave me when I had like an emergency like delivery. And I was like, dude, I'm not ready. I didn't have time for my wax. You got to do this. I can't reach. And he was like, uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. I have like, never seen it like this. And I don't want to see it. Exactly. He's like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So she said, you forget. And like an idiot, then you get pregnant again. Yeah, right. exactly. You don't remember until you're back in the delivery room the second time. Like, oh shit. <laughs> I forgot (laughs) because it's like a mercy from God that he kind of wipes your memory clean of all of that pain, you know? And I'm speaking as somebody who had pain-free deliveries. Like I could keep having a baby every year if I wanted to, but I do not. Yeah. Uh, but I think it is it is a mercy from God. And I think, you know, in Islam, like my mom, I, my daughter was ill for a very long time and in the hospital. And my mom was like, I hope you're taking pictures. And I hope you're writing in the journal about everything you did for her. And I was like, why, mom? Like, you want me to write a book? And she was like, no, I want her to read it when she grows up so she knows exactly what you did for her. And she owes you the rest of her life. And I was like... <laughs> That's not why I'm doing this. This is not. <laughs> att- and so what Zabel was talking about earlier, um, like they are separate and apart from you and these children like watching the floor. So that's if you have a healthy perspective of parenting. But if you are born and raised with the thought that you are another one of my appendages right. and your success is my success and your failure is my failure and you are a part of me in a very pathologic kind of way, then you think that way, mm-hmm. that it's a game of you mm-hmm. know, chess and it's keeping score. And I'm like, I'm not keeping score. I'm doing this because I but truly I love my love. child yeah. mm-hmm. and I have a fear of God. And right. this is my charge that he's given me on this planet. And I have to give her back at least as, as beautifully and perfectly as he sent her to me. Right. Like, that's what I'm trying to do. This is not, we don't parent because we're keeping score. And my kids don't owe me anything yeah. for doing what I'm doing for them because that is right. my duty, God-given duty as a parent to provide for them and to educate them and right. to love them and grow them physically, spiritually, all of that stuff, mm-hmm. emotionally fill their cups like that. So if you can kick them out of the nest. Right. Yes. That's where yes. we're trying to get to. Okay. So yeah. that they can grow up and be good Muslims who do the same for their yeah. families and their yeah. community. And I think that's the healthy perspective, which is something that people of our generation, um, second generation Muslim Americans mm-hmm. have to undo because that the immigrant sense of being an appendage was so oppressive at mm-hmm. times for a lot of us that this was, you know, a healthy way. And, you know, um, when I think back sadly about those moments that we're talking about, you have mam- momnesia with these young kids, you know, who's keeping score? God's keeping score. You know, he's the scorekeeper. And so we believe that we're rewarded for every contraction pain. We're rewarded for, you know, it's in our scripture that, you know, your mother carries you with pain upon pain upon pain. And it's, it's mentioned three times to talk about the three trimesters. Mm -hmm. And so for every contraction we're rewarded, if a woman dies in childbirth, it's equivalent of dying in holy war. So that's, you go to heaven. You know, like all your sins are wiped clean when you have babies. So, you know, women may not necessarily be able to be soldiers and go fight. They did in Islamic history, but, you know, modern Muslim women do not um, because of men. And so uh, uh, we have these God-given, I guess, abilities to score points and God was keeping score those nights and God was making those memories for us. And I'm just like hoping that it'll be kind of like the flask of memories and there'll Mm -hmm. be like, you know, what was it? The pensive in in heaven, the pensive in heaven. And I'm going to put those memories in there and stick my face in and be able to see myself pacing and nursing and talking to this nonverbal person. That's going to be my wish in heaven. (laughs) Yeah, that's beautiful. My husband also has the same wish, but he wants to know how many free throw shots he has made throughout his life. Is That's you know, important. Be a black girl oh, also. Yeah. yeah, there's a flask with those memories up there. Yeah. So. He wants to see his overall stats. Yeah. That's so funny. Is your audience Harry Potter savvy? Uh, yes. I, well, okay, I mean, I am. I would say a lot of them are. These, these are all Harry Potter references, guys. Just so. I've yeah. read none and I've seen none. I have to. Really? I know. I know. Oh, I know that it's something I need to in like uh, to be a part of the culturally culture. relevant, yeah. Sarah. I, well, yeah. no, no. You're I mean, like. Get 
on this now. I know that it's something that, I mean, my heart and mind will invest in. So it's like, I haven't started until I know I can you have time to it. So I just haven't done it now. Yeah. You know, it's a political commentary, right? Well, like I need another. I know. No, <laughs> no, don't talk about that. Don't if do you that had right read now. it, you would have been prepared for now. We oh. would never have had now if the entire okay. world, right, right okay. Julie? Then I better get Have on. you listened to the podcast, um, Harry Potter, A Sacred Text? Oh, I yes. listened to that one. <gasps> That's really, on my yeah. subscribe list. Yes. yes. Oh, oh boy. Okay. So I need to do this. Maybe yeah. you need to listen to the podcast first and that will convince you because it goes chapter by chapter. Okay. You know, hitting it in a liturgical sense. Okay. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So but I, I highly think, recommend reading the books. Yeah, yeah. I think to your point about, well, I mean, you know what you should have said to your mom, Uzma, is I guess you're ready to give me your book. Oh, <laughs> like, was she keeping, was she keeping? My mom has a mental scorecard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, in addition to all the things we do out of love, it's the big, I guess, overarching obvious one to me is it's also a gift. I mean, everything It's like when you go to do any sort of mission work and you go, oh, I was more blessed by the experience. Well, that's the thing of pouring yourself out. And again, there's a proverb about he who refreshes will himself be refreshed. It's like that idea that that outpouring and abundance is so lavishly returned in ways you can't get. So really the scorecard works out even, (laughs) you know, here, your now, favorite wherever. Every time, yeah. 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 Now you're making me want to have a fifth child. Thank oh, you God. <laughs> we will not do this again. Responsible for that fifth child. Right, right. <laughs> Her threshold for wanting to reproduce is really low. Yeah. I mean, I'll send you some diapers, but otherwise I'm out. On, you're like, I'm on done. Thanks for playing. <laughs> I think, like, what's interesting about when we had, we kind of thought we were done and then our twins came along. And oh my goodness. The things I had forgotten, or I thought I had forgotten about number two and number three, because the postpartum issues were so severe. What's weird is even though our twins are identical, my husband and I have talked about how one kind of looks like number two and one kind of looks like number three. That's so And funny. I would see things that they would do or expressions and I would be like, oh my gosh, I, yes. I totally remember that. And I didn't think I did. So it also convinced me that is written somewhere. I mean, yes. uh, it's in my heart. It's in my blood. What, what, but like it's there. And in your DNA now. Cell memory. Yeah. Cell memory. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe you should have number five. <laughs> that would, would be, be the one to do it. <laughs> I would do it, except my husband, I fixed my husband girls. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you're getting fixed. Cause I was on all that before uh, and I'm uh, done. Okay. Yeah. She still got pregnant despite two forms of birth control. So yes. oh, wow. that's my problem. So two out of four were accidents, even with birth control. Oh wow. So that is not happening anyway. So that was like, if you don't want any more yeah. kids, you need to get fixed. Cause birth control does not work for me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and my, my fourth was such a traumatic birth. We were in ICU for like two weeks afterwards that I just, okay. I'm like, I I'm open for adoption. Yeah. So if anybody wants to leave, I have had many a dream where somebody would leave a baby on my, my porch yeah. and I just take that baby. in. so I, I'm open for that. Um, Do contact the authorities when that happens because it's illegal for you to take the baby. I, I know, I know, I know. It's just a dream. <laughs> get that but baby a passport. Passport. Get that baby a passport. Exactly. We all come full circle. <laughs> that is so funny. We, no, we definitely too. appreciate you. I mean, we can probably talk forever, ladies. Yeah. Um, but I definitely appreciate you guys giving us a platform to come in front of your audience. Um, and the truth of the matter is we are super open and receptive to answering any kind of questions. Trust me, we've gotten it all. Uh-huh. So feel free to do that. Um, and at any point, if you guys need somebody for, you know, something from us, we are happy and mm-hmm. excited to, to help you guys out in any shape. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or way. You guys have been well, absolute thank you. delights. Precious. I, yeah. I do want to hear, I, I want to kind of use this as like a wrap up. Um, what is one thing that you wish non-Muslim moms knew about yes. momming while Muslim? Just maybe a short, a short sure. sentiment or something that you just wish that they understood or knew. I realize I didn't give you any heads up on this. No, I'm, oh, like, I'm thinking, I'm like, I yeah. wish they the week knew. In the, but it's primarily kind of our mission, right? Um, like we want them to know that we share so many of the same experiences, fears, and hopes for our children because, you know, I think we've said it in so many different ways that motherhood is a universal language and we can mm-hmm. all connect at that level. 
Mm-hmm. But that our kids have some additional challenges, and I don't think you need to open the TV and watch any political um, stuff about it. But you know, just what's happening right now in the last 24, 36 hours, mm-hmm. that's going to affect our kids, mm-hmm. like directly affect our kids, and in ways that you know Zeba might have talked about earlier today, where you know it's. On a regular basis, I think we get so desensitized by Mm -hmm. the microaggressions and the racism that happens all the time, but that it can reach very dangerous, critically dangerous, physically dangerous levels for our children. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, if you can ally with us in some way, you know, on some level, we are okay being the token Muslim friend, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we would, we would really love to have um, allies who think of us as more than that, who really truly want to make the world a better place by making it safer for our children. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That moves me so much. I don't know if I can say anything after that. I just love that. I feel like we went in an hour's time or whatever it is, from like strangers to like, I want to be like, I love you guys. Bye. I know. Call me. Call me in and out. When you, to Indy, <laughs> when you come to Arizona, her. call me. Exactly. Oh, I will. I yeah. will. Just love that. Thank you. Yeah. And so, my last question is: Is it cheesy for non-Muslims to say "Salam Alaikum" to you? It just means may peace be be onto you. So you're wishing somebody peace. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the same as so. My family is Syrian Lebanese. Yeah. And when you said in. In the, in me, at least, me, yeah, and me, you say okay. me, yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh, I wonder if this is a lot more similar than I, because I don't. My mother was born here also, so I'm like, I understand things. I don't know enough to know that I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> well, Urdu was derived from Arabic, Turkish, and Farsi. Okay. So there's a okay. lot of, you know, overlap yeah. between some yeah. of the language. So Ami and Umi. So when we do call outs to moms, we're like Ami, Umis, and Huyos. So okay. we hit our like South Asian contingency, our Arab contingency, and our African contingency. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Aminesia. Does that have a ring Aminesia. to it? Aminesia. Oh, Aminesia. yeah. Aminesia. Ooh. But Aminesia. there's only one Mamnesia. Only one yes. Mamnesia. And that's exactly. this one right here. I was like, supreme. get this okay. one off the search right. list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Such a pleasure to be with you guys thank virtually. You. And thank you for taking the time to be here. Yeah, oh, and pleasure. thanks for being so receptive to us. We so appreciate it because you know, women just got to, we're, we're going to change the world because we obviously have the words yeah. um, and the hearts for it. So, <laughs> yes. yes. Make sure Mommy. to check out their podcast, Mommying While Muslim. Thank you, yep. ladies. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Well, we hope you will come back next week on the Momnesia podcast, where we're going to share more stories before Momnesia sets in and we forget it all. Have a great week. Bye bye. I want to give a big shout out of thanks to our Momnesia support team. Original music by Phil Larson. Check him out on Spotify. Edit and mix produced by India Potter. And our Twitter, which is handled by Shannon New Spangler. Don't forget to subscribe to Momnesia and find us on Instagram and Facebook. Rate and review. Thanks so much for joining us.